Let's come back to the room for the two abstract. Um, the next one is the impact of ART history prior to pregnancy on postpartum gaps in HIV care among women living with HIV, presented by Renee Deval from South Africa. Thank you very much. Good morning. Um, good morning. Um, and I'll be presenting on behalf of my colleague, Tammy Phillips, and the other co-authors involved in the study. Oh, there we go. Um, expanded eligibility and access to antiretroviral treatment has resulted in more women living with HIV who are treatment experienced at the time of conception. Challenges with retention in HIV care during and after pregnancy are well documented, but thus far most evidence has come from women who initiated antiretroviral treatment during pregnancy. We aim to examine differences in postpartum gaps in HIV care according to treatment history at the time of pregnancy within the Kai Leacher antiretroviral um, treatment cohort in Cape Town in South Africa. We included women who were aged between 15 and 49 with at least one live birth. We described antiretroviral treatment history at the time of pregnancy according to year of delivery. We defined evidence of HIV care as a documented clinic visit or measurement of a CD4 count or viral load. And we defined gaps in HIV care as at least 270 days without any evidence of HIV care. We used Kaplan-Meier curves and Cox proportional hazard models um, to compare time to first gap in HIV care between three different groups of women. Those who are on antiretroviral treatment at the time of presenting for antenatal care, those who reinitiated antiretroviral treatment during pregnancy after a treatment interruption, and those who initiated antiretroviral treatment for the first time during pregnancy. We adjusted our analyses for age, parity, and whether the pregnancy occurred before or after the introduction of universal antiretroviral treatment eligibility in South Africa. Overall, we included 6,877 women with a median age at time of pregnancy of 28 years. Amongst all the women, 43% um, were on treatment, 5% were restarting treatment, and 52% were newly initiating treatment during pregnancy. As you can see from the figure, the proportion of women on treatment and those reinitiating treatment at the time of pregnancy has increased with more recent years of delivery. And overall, um, the cumulative incidence of experiencing a gap in care by one year postpartum was 16%, and by two years postpartum was 31%. Those who reinitiated treatment at the time of pregnancy were at the highest risk of experiencing a gap, followed by those who newly initiated antiretroviral treatment during pregnancy. When compared to those on antiretroviral treatment at the time of pregnancy, the adjusted hazard ratio for women who newly initiated antiretroviral treatment was 1.7, and for those who reinitiated antiretroviral treatment was 3.7. Um, our results were consistent when we accounted for death as a competing risk, um, and also when we, um, when we explored using different definitions of gaps in care, such as 180 days with no evidence of care, up to 360 days with no evidence of HIV care. So in conclusion, a large proportion of women living with HIV in our setting who presented for antenatal care were treatment experienced. And as we have seen before in previous studies, women who initiated antiretroviral treatment in pregnancy had an increased risk of experiencing a gap in care postpartum. There is also a small but growing proportion of women who re-enter HIV care at the time of their pregnancy, and these women especially have an increased risk of experiencing gaps in care postpartum. Assessment of antiretroviral treatment history during antenatal care could facilitate support interventions to optimize postpartum retention and care. And I'd just like to thank the women and healthcare providers at the Kailicha treatment cohorts, um, the, the IDEA um, data center team in Cape Town, as well as the Western Cape Provincial Health Data Center, who provided some additional data. Thank you.